welcome to episode 46 of Into the Podcast. I am your host, Sam, and I'm joined by Ryan. Hey, Ryan. Hello, Sam. How are you, mate? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm very good. I'm a bit tired. Why is that? We had a bloody weekend and a half, mate. Oh, it was a right weekend. We did do some weekends, didn't we? We did a really weekend thing. A weekendy weekend. Yeah. So, um, during this weekend, you came out with a few cuts and bruises. What happened? Um, well, I was fulfilling my dream <laughs> of being a professional wrestler. Yes. In your front room with that? Front room. Yep. 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 Hardwood floor. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there was some cushioning involved. Yeah, a bit later My on. breasts. <laughs> yeah, that was nice. I enjoyed that. But then the problem was I'd then, I'd then bounce off of you and then smash onto the floor. Which I haven't put on the internet. I only put the spinner on the I internet. I noticed that. It's only because when I rewatched it, I was like, God, you're such a fat twat. <laughs> because I'm not wet. So obviously I'm like, people will know they won't. So basically Ryan said, can I swan Tom bomb you? And I was like, uh, yes, of course. Cause was fucking hammered. So Claire was like, Oh, I'll film it. So as soon as she said she'd film it, what's a boy supposed to do? So I took my shirt off and put one of her bras on. Yeah, obviously. Just randomly. <laughs> yeah. She's like, oh, right, okay. And then you come running through, Claire films you, and I'm just there wobbling like a fucking bowl of jelly <laughs> wearing a bra. And I was like, oh, you fat twat. I'm not putting that on the internet. Oh, but it was so good. I worked on my entrance. It was the Hardy Boys entrance. We had the music playing. I stand on the, the puff or whatever it is. And then, uh, yeah, Swan Tom bombed straight onto you. All right, if we get how many comments how many comments asking for it? One. No, not one. <laughs> but want it. Okay. Seventeen. So if seventeen individual people ask for it, I'll put it online. Yes. So, I mean we we get way, way, way more listeners than that. Seventeen is an easy number. So exactly. seventeen of you want to see Ryan do a flip onto my big fat belly, then uh, just drop us a message and we'll if seventeen of you do it, we'll show you. <laughs> Alcohol was involved. <laughs> Quite a lot of alcohol. I introduced you to the wonders of the Royal Rumble drinking game. You did. So let's go through the weekend as it happened then. So um, we had plans on the Saturday, but you was like, oh, well, come over on the Friday because we're yeah. getting up nice and early anyway. There's no point rushing around on the Saturday. We'll have some drinks. We'll have some chills. We'll record the podcast. Yes. So I wasn't actually staying at home on Thursday night, so I set everything up wednesday mm-hmm. to put it in the boot of my car i triple checked everything i even brought a spare fucking um sound card because i was like instead if just in case we need the four-way one in case claire wants to get involved so i've got it yeah options are there options are there got to your house pulled it all out was like right let's get it recorded we're gonna eat curry I brought everything, including spares, bar the one cable we need to plug <laughs> everything into the laptop, <laughs> which you didn't have either. So no, it was didn't. such a random, weird little adapter. It's like yeah. I, I, as soon as you showed it me, I was like, I know, I've definitely not, not, definitely not got that in the house. <laughs> so we didn't record. That's why this is going to be coming to you on a Monday evening. So I'm going to bang it straight up as soon as I click stop. No editing, no nothing. Oh, uh, happy fucking yeah, days! It's just only getting up twelve later. hours late. That's that's nothing really. It's not compared to normal. Yeah, We're normally exactly. Months late. Yeah, so yeah. You can take and we did think hours. that because that did go through our minds, didn't it? It's like we've just been, we've just promised everyone we're coming back bigger, bigger and, better and better than ever, <laughs> and we fucked up straight away week one. So it's my fault, and obviously, what I did was blame you. Yeah, in front of all of our millions and millions of fans. Mm-hmm. So that was followed by a lovely M and S curry. Oh yeah, your fantastic wife came home. M&S curry for all of us. All the trimmings. All the trimmings. We had samosas. Yeah. We had little fucking naan breads. They were cute, weren't they? They were naan cute. breads. You didn't little even eat yours. I were full. They oh. were a lot of food. I ate it all. Yeah. Hence the wobbly jelly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Just, so, just curry. Just yeah, curry belly. Yeah. Just curry belly. Yeah. So we had that. And uh, then Claire decided that she wanted to read my tarot. She wanted to get yeah. out the tarot cards mm-hmm. and just... Read me in my future. Yeah. How and was I, that experience? For well, you? I'll be honest with you. It's something that's always fascinated me. Tarot cards have always fascinated me. Mm. Not enough to actually do myself, but I've always liked that. Obviously, it's meant to be a spiritual thing, but I've always liked, ooh, the psychology behind it. Yeah. Interest me. So when Claire asked me if I wanted, I was like, fucking hell yeah, girl, get them out. So she whips them out. She does a spread. Yeah. I'm like, ooh, this is really interesting. I'm like, looking what she's doing, and it would bang on. Yeah. Wasn't it? It was. It your was fir- yeah, your first reading. It was fucking bang on. So then she allowed me to have a go with you and Claire. So I did like a... It was like a relationship a one, relationship wasn't it? A relationship one on you two. Obviously, I had the book in front of me so I could read what it all meant and stuff. 
Uh, then we did another one on me. That was bang on again. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, now I'm obsessed. I own the Tarot <laughs> Bible and a deck of tarot cards. Literally, after we'd finished it, you're like, I need these in my life. I, I watched oh. two and a half hours worth of documentaries on tarot yesterday <laughs> and read half of the book. So you're going to quit your job and become a uh, full-time, full-time like medium? Yeah, like, basically. Reading, reading tarot cards and... What else is it? Seances? Yeah. Maybe. I think I think what I like most about it is because when I get obsessed, now I can't remember if I mentioned this on the podcast. I might not have done, but recently I became obsessed with the dark web. And yeah, I think you uh, mentioned it. it happened at like nine at night that I watched a video on Facebook and then I ended up awake till three in the morning watching documentaries on the dark web and shit. Yeah. Like really in a rabbit hole. Well, this is my new rabbit hole. Right, okay. But what I found really interesting was when I started reading the, the Tarot Bible is it doesn't really overly claim to be spiritualistic. So it does, but mm. it's very much like half spiritualistic, half psychology. Right, okay. Which I respect so much more, because I was expecting to open it, read it, and it all be like everything being all about like juju. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, shit, yeah. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But it's really not. It, it's written so well, and it, it it's kind of, you know, everything's open to interpretation and blah, blah, blah. And I just fucking find it fascinating. Mm. So I watched a couple of documentaries uh a video, sorry, on like the meanings of the cards and stuff. So I'm going to practice nice. learning the meanings of the cards. I'm going to do a few spreads on myself. So it teaches you how to do like practice spreads on yourself. Yeah, yeah. Start practicing other people. And over the next, I don't know, so I'm going to say six months, I'd like to think that I could probably do a reading without the book. That'd be good. I'm going to give it six months. It wouldn't Ma- take long, I think, because a lot of... The cards, for those that don't know, it, they're almost very similar to like playing cards, aren't they? So you've got like four, um, four suits, suits, swords, wands, pentacles, and what's the last one? Cups, cups, uh, and then they go up to like you have like ace to exactly the same ten. as your cards. So yeah, you've got and then you got- your ace to ten, then your knights, queens. Kings, yeah. Don't you? Some or of them are worded as slightly different, aren't yeah. they? So it might be like Lord or Emperor or yeah, something yeah. like that. But and they're all. They're... But then you have your twenty-eight majors as well, which are like the Sun, the Moon, the Joker, the Fall, Death, Death um, the Devil, stuff like that. The hanged Man, the Hanged Man. Mm. So they're all the ones that I think are going to take a little bit longer for me because on this video it sort of explained to me what because um, the four suits all mean something different. So like Pentacles is financial or yeah. work. So that's going to be quite easy once I know sort of individually. But it's quite interesting. It's telling you to like keep a journal. So like study the card itself because everything comes from the picture on the card and like mm-hmm. take your interpretation. So you understand what it means from a like tarot thing, but then take your interpretation from that meaning and the yeah, card, yeah. write it down, sort of get to know them. And I was like, you know what? It's like learning a second language. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah. So I was like, fuck it. I'm going. I have not learned anything new in so long. Nice. I'm going to fucking go bold to deep into this. Good. It's good to saying, work your brain. Yeah. I'm not going to turn into some, you know, like fanatic or anything. But I most definitely, I'm giving myself six months that I can do a comfortable tarot reading. I like so that. That's cool. That's my. That's my goal. Yeah, I like that goal. That's yeah. good. And if anyone listens, actually is into it, or can give me any tips or some ideas or videos or books or anything like that, get in contact because I am fully fucking invested in this. It's nice. Yeah. It feels good, mate. Good. Like, I genuinely wanted to get home, but was rushing about. I wanted to get home and read some more of the book. And I don't read. Yeah, so it makes it twice as hard for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, we- so we did the tarot. We did the tarot. Uh, we drank a load of beer. Yeah. We drank quite a lot at this stage. We had. And then we didn't know what to do next. And what did Ryan suggest? Well, obviously, the next logical thing is Royal Rumble drinking game. Yeah. That's always my next step. Yeah, the next step. Let's go and watch the 2001 Royal Rumble and get drunk. Yeah. So we have obviously mentioned this a couple of times on the podcast before, but if this, this is your first time, Ryan, what is the Royal Rumble drinking game? So it's as simple as it sounds. It's a drinking game that Claire and I came up with during lockdown when I first subscribed. When I first found out that you could... That WWE even had a subscription site. They mm-hmm. can just stream all the old school wrestling. God, it's on. big. It's, yeah, it's huge. There's way more on that than there is on Netflix. Yeah, bloody loads. You'll never be able to watch it all. Um, and then what we did was, yeah, we just came up with Royal Rumble drinking game. Because what else could you could you do during lockdown other than come up with new and creative ways to get drunk at home? Exactly, because that's all we did was get pissed, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then we just 
it's just evolved over time. So I think I couldn't really remember the exact rules, but we came up with rough ideas, didn't we? So obviously for those that don't know the Royal Rumble, it's 30 wrestlers enter the ring, one every 60 seconds or 90 seconds, can't remember the exact timing. And it's last man standing. They have to throw the other wrestlers outside of the ring and whoever's last in the ring wins the Royal Rumble. Yeah. And we just came up with drinking rules for it, didn't we? So every time a wrestler comes in, which is, let's say it's every 60 seconds, we all like to drink. Mm-hmm. Every time a wrestler's eliminated, we all like to drink. Every time a wrestler does his special or finishing move, we'd all drink. Um, then there was some more trickier ones, wasn't there? So we all picked a wrestler beforehand. We didn't know, because the order is randomised. They come mm-hmm. out in a random order. You have no idea who's even entering. There's always special guest appearances. So we all picked a wrestler beforehand, didn't we? I think I picked The Undertaker. Don't know who you picked. I picked The Rock. Claire picked, picked Stone Cold. Stone Cold. So as soon as your wrestler comes out, everyone else has to well, <laughs> finish the drink. Finish the drink. Um, but we did five, didn't we? We did five because we were drinking big old, by that point, big old... Um, no, I don't, like, think it, I don't think it was us. It was because Claire was drinking wine and Prosecco. That was it, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we would have drank it. Yeah, we would have. Because we're legends. Yeah, but... Um, Probably a good job we did because <laughs> yeah. there's a lot. You get through a lot of drinks. Oh, we got through a lot. Because the worry is, because you know you drink, even if it's just a sip, you know every every minute you're having a, a drink, a you're having one, a gulp. And by that point, and all it takes is like a big character to come in. So I think on that one, like the Big Show came in and eliminated like six wrestlers. Yeah, bang, so, bang, so it's bang. like, oh, Big Show comes in, so we drink. Then he throws out five guys, they all drink. And a couple of them with he did his finishing move on. Yeah. So it's like, suddenly you're doing like seven, eight drinks. It's yeah. like, well, you necked one drink and then you pour in another one before you even drink it again. And then whilst you're doing that, someone else has come in and it's yeah. fucking, you can't, ended up catching up on yourself. For Max, we know you're listening. We're nearly done with the wrestling talk. We're not getting, we're not getting too in depth. No. To stay with us. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so how was your exp- first experience of the Royal Rumble drinking him? I fucking loved it. Yeah. <laughs> I absolutely adored it. Obviously, big wrestling fan, and especially the fact that we went back to 2001 as well. Classic so, attitude prime era. time, my era of watching wrestling. But obviously, back then, I wasn't getting pissed on watching it. Now we are. So that it's, is something... It's even better. That is something we are going to be doing. Yeah. I'm even thinking now, do we just play? Because obviously, we're slowly coming up. It's only about eight weeks away, you know, before our year episode. I know. Do we just get pissed and do the Royal Rumble drinking game live on air. We could do. That'd just, be fun. Just have it on, get drunk, do the Royal Rumble drinking game, because it's only going to be, what, like an hour, isn't it? Yeah, there the are yes, it's only less than that. We probably. start it, we talk about which one we're going to do, we talk, we talk about who we picked, bish, bash, bosh, and we just fucking drink, talk bollocks in between, narrate what's going on. Yeah. People probably aren't going to be that bothered because it's wrestling theme, but fuck well, it. It's, it's us, isn't it? It's for us. And we'll be so drunk by the end. Yeah. So yeah, all right, that's our year episode. <laughs> what year are we going to do, though? Ooh, I think we'd, we'll do some research okay. into which is the best, best one. Best Royal Rumble. Yeah. We, it would be handy if we knew who the wrestlers are, because even say Best Royal Rumble, like 2010 or something, I'm like, well, I probably only know a handful of people. Oh, God, yeah. We have to go back to Attitude Era. Yeah. All right, cool. So we'll that sounds that. good. Yeah. So, so that's yeah. going to be And then episode. the night progressed, and then for some reason, why was I doing the Spinneroony of all things? Because I don't think... Booker did, T haven't come out. Booker T didn't come out in that point. No. But you was just... I think you just said Spinneroony. Yeah. Because this weekend was a lot of somebody getting something random in the head and it happening. And we'll explain that in a minute. <laughs> so, yeah, I think you just said Spinner Rooney. Then you was like, I'm going to pull off the best Spinner Rooney. Yeah. Which you didn't for a while. I, I think I did a, one of the best ones. Oh, you did a banger one. I've got it on video. I, I think the best one I did, though, was before we started recording when I only did like the second time where I was just yeah. dicking about. What, and I was like, nailed that. Let now record it. And then fucked it up for the next 30 attempts. And fucked up your knees and elbows oh, and head my God. and back like, along the way. I, I felt fine. No, to be fair, even by the end of the night, I was like, right, I'm done now. I can't keep throwing myself on the floor. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm a 33-year-old bloke and it, it, this, <laughs> this hurts me. Um, but I woke up Saturday and I was just like, oh, why do my legs hurt so much? <laughs> and one of them, like, you don't realise you're bruised until, you know, until, like, you touch your arm. Like, oh, fuck, why is my elbow? Yeah, Why yeah, is yeah. it really bruised and swollen? Like, oh, my hips, my back. Like, oh, my God, my knees. Like, So, yeah. But I'd, totally worth it though. Totally worth it. And then it progressed to you know my hero Jeff Hardy doing the Swanton bombs, practicing the entrance coming out. I've yeah. had a great time. I was in my element. And I think afterwards we watched a few like you introduced me to some more modern wrestlers yeah, like Finn just, Balor and yeah, and just Fiend and people. I watched a few episodes and we called it a night. I don't know, like half one, two maybe. I think it was about half one. We could have gone on longer, but we didn't want to spoil because we was on it all the next day. Yeah. So we went to bed. 
<clears throat> happy days. Um, went to sleep. Woke up with a hangover. I'll be honest. I wasn't too bad. I was yeah. shocked at how how all right I felt. Yeah, I had a banging headache, but I also had toothache as well. Ah, uh, see, that's probably what made it worse. So I was a bit like, oh god, I'm not sure about today, but <clears throat> it's fine. Went to the car, took some fucking badass pills, um, and I was like, everything will be cool. So just chill for a bit. Max come round, and then by twelve o'clock, we're back on the road, heading into town to go get a fucking pint. So it didn't matter how much my head hurt, because I knew we're about to have a pint, and I'm going to feel fucking dandy after that pint. Yeah. So we went to this bar called Einstein's. We got a hot dog and a burger and whatnot, a couple of pints, um, and then made our way down to a bloody kickball soccer game. You went to your first football game for 20 years. 20 years, and yeah. How was the experience? I fucking loved it. So we went nice. to see Chesterfield versus Barnet. Little beknownst to me, Fucking apparently a massive game. It was a sellout crowd. Um, Chesterfield's top of the league. Barnet a second. Yeah. So it's a big, big, big game. I yeah. know none of this. I was going for the pie and pint, as yeah. I said. Yeah, yeah. So we had a few pints, walked down to the stadium, about half hour walk. Had a pint at a little pub on the corner where all the hooligans were out. <laughs> <clears throat> Went into the stadium just in time for a minute's silence, which was nice. Which is nice. I, yeah, I like that because, you know, now because it's Remembrance Weekend, you know, it's, it's nice to actually go out and do something. I don't normally go to like any services or anything, but it was nice because I felt like we marked the occasion because there absolutely there was like and everyone's really respectful. It was like a couple of minutes. They had all the army personnel all the way around, didn't they? Mm-hmm. They had the like the parade laying the laying, reefs. laying the reefs, playing the last post and stuff. I really I really like yeah. that. I felt like it was nice to be part of like a community doing absolutely. that. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. And uh yeah, then the game started. It was good fun, nil nil at half time. So yeah. we fucked off five minutes early to get straight to, to the bar. Straight to the pie and pint. Yeah. So we had a steak and ale pie each. Yeah. Very peppery. Very peppery. But lovely. Very peppery. It was very uh, Professor Peppy. It was pe- Peppy, very, <laughs> very. Uh but bloody lovely, nonetheless. Yeah. And then the second half starts and fucking Chesterfield to start hammering a man. Oh god. Amron and it were relentless, wasn't it? Fucking goal one. And I'm like, oh, oh. I jump up there and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Fuck, I've never watched Chesterfield. I'm like, yeah, yeah, go on, lads. Hey. Yeah. Just kind of copying what everyone else is yeah, doing. Yeah. Fucking goal two. I'm straight up. We're jumping, we're dancing, we're <laughs> yeah. fucking hugging everyone. Hey, this is brilliant. <laughs> goal three. I'm up, I'm screaming. I'm noticing all the Chesterfield fans giving it the wanker signs to the Barnet fans, <laughs> waving at them as they're leaving. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you silly buggers, leave them alone. Goal four, I'm up there with him. Oh, yeah. Hey, wankers! Fuck you, Barnet! Ah, Barnet, you useless pricks. I was fully invested by this point. Within 45 minutes, we turned into full-on <laughs> Chesterfield Uptras. Because <laughs> like, we were right next to the away fans yeah, as we well. Were, yeah. And then they're all kicking off, like trying to charge over like they are, and the police having to drag them out. And, we're just oh, waving at them as they get kicked out. <laughs> And then uh, Gary Uper came on, Max's favourite player ever. Yeah, Good old Gary Uper player. And uh, knocked a couple in, and, but that was an extra time. Yeah, I don't really count. Yeah, like, game not, over by that one. 92 yeah. and 95 minutes yeah, to win. 4 2 win. Happy as a pig in shit. What a lovely day. Walk back to the pubs. Yeah. Bit of chips and cheese. Yeah. Couple more pints. Yeah. And then this is where it happens again. Sam gets an idea in his head. <laughs> and I think, I can't remember how I worded it, but it was something along, along the lines of. I feel that everyone in Chesterfield needs to listen to Savage Garden. <laughs> yeah. Savage Garden. It was when we were in the, um, it was half time. We were having the pint and pie. Oh, that was it. P- yeah. The, the pint and the pie. And you just, I started remember, singing, you just it started randomly, singing Savage Garden. And then all like me, you and Claire were just singing Savage Garden in like the lobby bit. <laughs> and then it's become a bit of an ongoing joke because Max was pretending to be an Uber fan. Yeah. And I was like, you know, you're not. But he really had me going that like he was an Uber fan. So I was like, well, we need to go find Savage Garden. So we walked around trying to find Savage Garden. But where are you definitely going to find Savage Garden? Fucking karaoke bar, bro. Karaoke bar. So we get in there. We get the shots in. Fucking yeah. drinking away. We're getting pissed. Max is on form. Yeah. Claire does. What song does Claire do? She changed last minute to Living on a Prayer. She did Living oh, on I a Prayer. She was going to do something before that, but she changed last minute. Yeah. So we got up there. We supported her. We're having a bit of a scene yeah. with her. We're having a good time. She talks me into doing it. Because... I talk a big game, but I'm actually a very nervous little boy. <laughs> all right. I was like, all right, I can't sing for shit, but all right. Now this boy can't sing, but what he can do is pull a crowd. <laughs> That's what he can do. So fucking get it on. That's it, mate. 
getting everyone involved. The dance yeah. floor gets fucking rammed hey, to a slow song. To Savage Garden. And I'm just walking around. I'm passing the mic to yeah. everyone. We're all getting singing to all the blokes for some reason. Just getting and all everyone the blokes involved. Were loving it. And you they were pulled a crowd. Yeah. I pulled a fucking crowd. And then that was it. It was game on then. I'm like, right, straight back up. Yeah. The DJ's like, Sam, Sam, you doing another? I was like, yeah, you fucking know I am, bro. <laughs> Get me breakfast at Tiffany's now. <laughs> <laughs> so then we're doing uh, breakfast at Tiffany's. We're all up on the dance floor. We're yeah. giving it big and... Then me and Claire with duet. Yeah. Because let's be honest, you may be married to her, but our love oh, it's, it's, it's unbreakable. It's eternal. So we sang Summer Loving. Yeah. And then fucked off. And then left. We was even wearing our coats to leave. I know. <laughs> like, oh, Sam, yeah, you're, you're up now. Like, oh, fuck's sake. Literally out the door, halfway out the door. Yeah. <laughs> and then that was it. Then we, did we go home after that? Max went to go clubbing. Ah, uh, that's it. But I was sensible because I knew I had a busy you day was, yeah. Sunday. And... Even that, we'd had a lot. It was a long old day, and we'd, we'd been drinking since twelve, and we'd been drinking the night before. And it was this was about half eleven, twelve, to be fair. Yeah. And I felt like this is the turning point. We'd not had tea. We'd only had some chips and cheese. Yeah. Uh, we had a pie at the game, but that was like a tiny know, little pie, yeah, uh, quarter to four or something. Yeah. So I was like, "This is the turning point. The clubs are shit. They're dire." And I've been to them. I know, and it was too early anyway. I was like, "If we go there, we're just going to ruin." Sour what was what's been a great day. And so, you did the right thing. And then we went, spent a fucking fortune on Donna meat, chips and cheese. Oh shit, I still owe you for uh, Did you pay for it, did Matt? Yeah, no, I paid for it all. Oh, I owe you money. <laughs> but somebody, I went to order that. I was like, oh yeah, I was like, just, oh, uh, Claire wants one. Okay, I'll get two. Uh, Sam, uh, three, Max, four, four, four Donna meat chips. <laughs> It's like 38 quid. Like, what? And they were tiny as well. I know. The smallest Donna meat and chips. Which is a bit annoying because we went to them for the chips and cheese earlier and they were spot on. Yeah, they were good size. I feel like they turned, they turned against us. As they did turn on. against yeah. us, didn't they? But then we got home and I was like, well, we could just have a couple more drinks. Like I made Max buy a s- seven pounds worth of <laughs> two <laughs> bottles, Pepsi Max. Two bottles of Pepsi Max. And we're talking the 1.5 litres. So I was like, get two of them, mate, because yeah. we'll go back. We'll all have a couple each. Yeah, yeah. Because then you think, maybe another hour up, a couple each, you're going to need more than a litre and a half of Coke. Yeah. To get two. Seven quid. Seven quid. Three pound fifty for this bottle of Coke. Anyway, we got home. We all had half a glass of water and fell asleep watching Rick and Morty. <laughs> oh, amazing. You were gone straight away. Oh, immediately. We sang Mr. Plough from The Simpsons for a bit. Yeah, because I always I always do this when I'm coming drunk. For some reason, I always say to Claire, I was like, we watch Mr. Plow. <laughs> I really want to watch Mr. Plow. But we didn't. And she's like, off with Mr. Plow. It's so annoying because the other time she does let me put it on, I fall asleep instantly <laughs> and she's left with Mr. Plow playing. <laughs> but instead, we watched Rick and Morty, the episode where they have all the. Um, it's all the parasites, isn't all it? The parasites. Uh, total recall, is it? Yeah, yeah. That yeah. one? I think so, what's that, that? Fell asleep, went to bed, yeah. woke up Sunday morning, tip top. Yeah, I No headache, I was tired. Yeah, that was but it. I was just tired. I didn't feel rough. Not in the slightest. I felt a bit more bruised because the bruises were sinking in from all the spinneroonies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get that written on your tombstone. The bruises have sunk in from the spinneroonies. <laughs> Honestly, all my knee is like, like you know, like a burn. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. like, because I've just slid on the fucking hardwood floor <laughs> about 18 times. Um,. Um, totally worth it and then yeah and then on Sunday we all got up quite early because I had to drive to Manchester to go to a horror comic con which initially we were all going to go to but I it was my Sunday with Bobby if I gave her up to go to comic con that would have been two weeks without seeing yeah, her I, yeah. I don't particularly like doing that and we, we that was pla- that's been planned for a long time to be fair we were going to do the Saturday weren't we yeah but, but the Saturday tickets all sold out they sold out so yeah unfortunately so tell us because we've not actually spoke about this at all so um, talk us through horror con because it's my street mate this yeah and 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 we should definitely go again because i know you absolutely love it we'll have to just pay attention next time and get the saturday tickets 100 because yeah. then you know you could go you could either stay over or just like it was a little bit out of the center so it was better driving um but you know you could always have a couple of beers and stuff mm. but you know you've been to comic cons before it's, they're all very similar but you know it's nice because this one Everything is horror themed. All the stalls, everything that I was, we were speaking to one guy, one stall, uh, stall, stall owner, um, and he had loads of like handcrafted what looked like we we actually got some like potions from like Harry Potter and stuff. So like unicorn blood and like dead oh, man's cool. blood from like supernatural and you know elixir of life, and they're all really nice like handcrafted stuff. And he was like, oh yeah, we all everyone here had to have some sort of horror link to be able to even be allowed to put up a stall so that was oh, cool wow. then loads and loads of guests there um i think if you're a normal 
just generic pop culture fan, you might not know who they are, but if you're a horror fan, yeah. there was icon after icon. Um, <clears throat> I mainly wanted to go because I, I really wanted to meet Brad Dourif, yeah. um, who in the horror world is best known as being the voice of Chucky yeah. um, from ch- all the Child's Play films. Um, but I don't associate him with that at all. Like, I associate him with, obviously... Loads of other things, mainly Lord of the Rings, who, for those that don't know, plays Green Wormtongue. But he's in loads. Of, he's like one of those pe- people that's in so many franchises. He's in like Exorcist 3, he's in like Alien 4. Mm-hmm. Um, most famously known for probably being his best supporting act. He got nominated for an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor for being Billy in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, yeah. which is an incredible, incredible character. In incredible forms. character, yeah. Um, and it was weird because I got a chance to meet him. Me and Carl went, we went to Telford, you know, the one we went to the year before he was yeah. there. And it was so weird because, because I was spoiled for choice and I didn't really go for like meeting guests at that time. I didn't meet anyone, but afterwards I was like, oh, I kind of wish I met like someone like him. Cause he's getting on now. He's like 73 and think mm-hmm. we're not going to be around forever. Um, and it's dead weird because I'm, I, it was one of those things like, like the Savage Garden thing seemed to manifest. Cause when Claire and I were on holiday back in the summer, I just randomly came to him. I was like, ah, oh, I don't know why. I was like, bit gutted i didn't do that bradger if i check like there's a roster con you can check where people are it's like oh he's not been to anyone since then so he obviously doesn't do one very often he's old man and he's american so it's not like he's not like he's local just yeah, yeah from yeah. london or whatever and anyway i checked three days later after i looked and it had been announced oh he's coming to manchester in two in three banging. months time i was like what the fuck like <laughs> i've literally just cr- put that out in the universe and it's just happened like mad um but yeah, so got to meet him. He like, To say he was popular would be an understatement. Really? Cues all day long to sit. To, I, I'd pre-booked an autograph and they said, they said like a few days before, you have to book a time slot because otherwise we can't guarantee you'll even get a, a signature. Even though I prepaid, he was Fuck that busy. Now. But um, yeah, some really cool guests there. Um, we got to see like Q&As with stage. It was like a really good setup actually. It was really nice. Um, some Q and A's we saw. I saw Brad and his daughter Fiona Jurif was there because she's also in some of the later Chucky films. Oh, okay, I've not seen them all. Oh, she in like Court of Chucky and stuff. Think yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, as well as in other stuff. Alyssa Sutherland was there. Obviously, Evil Dead Rise. Yeah, yeah. Um, she was cool. She's like you know now a horror icon already from one film. Oh, amazing! Isn't Ellie, it? her character in Evil Dead Rise is terrifying. Awesome, awesome, awesome character. So. Yeah, loved it. Really good. Really good day out. The only problem was it was off the back of two days worth of drinking. And it was yeah. a Sunday night because we got back late so it was Manchester. If it, if it had been the Saturday, perfect. So we'll definitely, definitely have to go because it'll be yeah. just right up your street. of Horror, all the amazing cosplays and stuff. All the standard stuff you get at a, a Comic-Con. Yeah, I saw... Um, so I follow a few... Um, horror pages on Facebook and I saw quite a few people that was there. Yeah. So I saw videos of a lot of people that were there in cosplay. There was a guy dressed up as art that was fucking oh, insane. Yeah, yeah, did you, yeah. Did you see him? Yeah, saw him. He was yeah. insane, wasn't he? There was some, yeah, incredible ones. Some of the the people in, um, one of the guys who had a Predator costume, it was unbelievable. Had the really? laser come out and everything. Oh like, my oh, God. It was, and he was massive as well. It was, it was incredible. Yeah. Um, so we'll do it and even if we do get the Sunday we'll just make sure we book the Monday off yeah 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 exactly it get really good and um, upstairs they, are, oh, they have like the cantina bar from Star Wars no which way. is like a permanent feature you can book it out for like um, parties or like do a skate room or nights what? out yeah it's like a, it's like a literally it was incredible we walked in because it was upstairs we didn't even realise it was there until like later on in the day Claire found it and um, walked in it was literally and obviously because everyone's in cosplay and dressed up it was like have I just walked into star wars like the world of star wars like all these mad creatures and aliens just sat in the cantina bar the only thing that was lacking was the band <laughs> yeah but it was an actual bar as well so you could get drinks there and stuff that is unbelievable insane. we'll have to go oh my god yes all we right. should rent it out let's do it now yeah right bye <laughs> peace <laughs> oh that's insane. Oh, that's fucking awesome yeah so yeah. it was a good day long weekend very long weekend well worth it one, yeah, one of the best weekends I've had in a very long time. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. Very, wasn't it? very much needed. Just great friends. We laughed all weekend. Oh, we did. No bad blood. Other than when Max told me I smelt. 
Yeah. He's he lucky did. I didn't kill him. You I'll were. You did not look happy. <laughs> I mean, I had two fake at the time as well. That was early that in the day, help. wasn't it? That was when we first <laughs> yeah. got to the pub on the Saturday. And he just told me I smell one. I was like, oh, cheers, Max. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. So that's weekend done. We had the best time. Should we get some fucking snackage? Yeah, we've, I feel like we've just talked a lot, you know? We have talked a lot. We have, we've been doing a lot. We've, this is not like us. Normally we get together and it's like, what are you doing? Bad. Uh, nothing. I played a bit cod. Yeah, that's bad. But I've not played cod since we last spoke. No, I think I'm having a few games after we finish tonight. Yeah. yeah so, nice. yeah, I think Jess wants a couple of games, so I said I'd jump on. Yeah, that'll be good. Go. Yeah. Can't have too much of a late one, though, because, you know, busy working, man, aren't I? Yeah, you are. Anyway, shush, got snacks. Uh, is someone singing us in? Drew! Sing us in, baby. Here come Sam and Ryan, listen to them both speak. They've come for hours all with their pop culture critique. But are you even a nerd if you don't overread? So come on, everybody, it's the snack of the week. Snackies! Snackatha Christie's. So have you listened to... I like that. I like that. Snackatha Christie's. Um, have you listened to Drew's EP? I have, I have. It's bloody out, Revolutions. Yeah. I've had it going round my head all week. Yeah. Okay, it's the Revolution. It's, like, it's all about going <clears throat> in circles. And one song's called The Wheel, and the other one is called... Um, Carousel. Thank you. There it is. Circular <laughs> one. Uh, yeah, I, I've added it to the playlist. It's on the playlist now. Nice. It follows uh, Money Game Part 3 by Ren. Ah, now on, another on bottom. new entry. Oh, yeah, well, we'll talk about that shortly. So, Drew, well played, my friend. If you haven't listened to it yet, please get on Spotify or Amazon Music or fucking... Apple Music. Apple Music or fucking everywhere else you listen to music. And listen to Drew Flanagan, please. Do it. Do it! Thank you. Snacks. Snacks. So, I brought us two snacks per episode, so we're going to record two episodes tonight. Yep. So I bought two snacks for each, and I went, Biscuit Crisp. Biscuit crisp, yeah, together combined, together combined. So, what do you prefer, a biscuit or a crisp? Oh, it's an hard one. But it, I think crisp over biscuit normally. Yeah, I think so. But I just like a crisp. Whereas when I get a craving for a biscuit, nothing will satisfy that craving. Right? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I, I don't I mean. get that craving for crisps normally, but I eat a lot more crisps. So, mm. and I normally have my biscuits with a cup of tea, and I don't drink a lot of tea either. What about with your coffee? No. I just think because I'm a dunker. Right. If you're dunking, I like the the tea flavour on a biscuit. Not a, I just think it ruins the biscuit, the coffee flavour. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know what you mean, yeah. Uh, but no tea or coffee with these. Now, I think these are new because I've not seen them before. I got us some apple and black currant burst jammy fucking dodgers, mate. Wow. Have we done, done jammy dodgers? I think we have. We, we still have haven't done our tier. We haven't. Uh, our leaderboard. Top yeah. gear. I'm picturing like a Top Gear style. Yeah, we said we'd board. do that on top tier catch up, didn't we? But, you know, I had a mental breakdown. Leave me alone. I've been busy. I can't even remember what we did last week, to be fair. No, I can't remember what we did last week. So we these bought- are what? Apple and black currant. Burst. Apple and What's black the burst? currant. What's the burst? I don't know. I'm assuming it's just very bursty with flavour. Enough said, Jammy Dodgers. Get fucking down, you youth. Mm. 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 Now, now, there's not a lot of bursting happening. No, but do you know what Jamie Dodgers like him? Go on, cup of tea. It is. It's very dry. I'm I'm putting that out there. That's the best Jamie Dodger I've ever had. Best jammy dodger you've ever had. I am. So the flavour is just like a fucking black currant chew it. Mm. But in a biscuit. Yeah. And black currant's my favourite flavour. Yeah. For those people that know, I am a, I am a vapist. I do yeah. vape. And uh, I only get um, black currant flavoured vape juice. I did not know that. Yeah. Big black currant fan. So that, correct, it needs a cup of tea. Cup of tea with ease, mate. Yeah. I'd be jizzing everywhere. Jizzing everywhere. I would, but I'm a big fan. I do like a jammy dodger. I have yeah. got quite a dry mouth generally. That's the problem. I've but... I got an even drier mouth now. You've got a Professor Peppy in a Twisted Fruit Zero Sugar. That's true. Oh. Right, they're getting fucking hammered later. Now, the best thing ever, mate. When I went to the shop to buy snacks earlier, fucking Christmas, innit? 
It is nearly so, six weeks. Yeah, so all the Christmas snacks are out, and I fucking love Christmas snacks. And I saw these because we had pretzels last week. We did. And you said, oh, I'm just not really a pretzel fan. But whilst we was out over the weekend, Max brought a big tub of pretzels because the kitchen was shut and was hungry. Yeah, it's an American diner bar. And you ate you ate them and was like, oh, they're really nice. Yeah, I don't know if that was made better because I was hungry and I was a little bit inebriated. Maybe. But you enjoyed them, so I thought, we're going to go with pretzels. Not chocolate-covered, normal pretzels, just to see how you go. But these ones, my friend, in the shape of a snowflake, that's how you know the Christmas, but they're sour cream and chive pretzels. Interesting. Now, sour cream and chive pretzels are my favourite. Why? I, they just taste amazing. Now, they're one of these ones that you put in your mouth and you're sucking them to get Suck all them. the amazing flavour out. Mm, so, so flavoursome. So, so flavourful. These, these are my favourite. And whenever I normally do like... So we do American football every weekend and I've got some amazing snack helmets. You've seen I've seen awesome your snack American helmets. football snack helmet. It's these fantastic. These normally enter the snack helmet. Right. I normally get these along with some like Doritos and some fucking buttons or something. So get that fucker down, yeah? I'm so excited. These little snowflakes. These little snowflakes, mate. Oh, right. I dropped it. I've dropped it. It's gone on the floor. Get another one. Well, no, if I don't pick it up, then... You don't normally pick things up when you come around here. You just leave it on the floor and then stand yeah, on it. But, but people are listening this time. Oh, yeah. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, enjoy your pretzel, mate. Cheers. How are you feeling? You don't look impressed. I'm going back for a second handful. Um, I'm getting the sour cream chive now at the end. Really? Yeah. Oh. I thought you might have had a dud one. Try again. I don't know if it's because, though, I've just had a jammy dodger and then washed my, that down with, you know, my twisted fruits. So you got quite a fruity fruit palate. Ma- yeah, so I probably needed a little palate cleanser. Like a whiskey or a... You got any whiskey? Yeah. <laughs> I have. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm going to carry on eating fistfuls of these. They're nice, though. They are nice. Mm. They'd be great in a football-shaped, football helmet-shaped... Um, Wouldn't they? ...snack holder. <laughs> Speaking of, my fantasy football team... Yeah? Do I do fantasy football, American football every year? Yeah. Fantasy NFL team? I lost the first three games. That's bad. I was getting hammered every game. That's not really bad. Haven't lost a game since. I'm now second in the league. That's good. The F boy. Smashing second it. In the league. I'm fucking hammering it. How many in the league? Ten. That's good. Mm. Very impressive. And? How much longer of the season is left? Um, I think about halfway now. Right. So, I'm second. Yeah. I was one win behind number one. Yeah. I won, he lost. So we're now drawing. Ooh. I'm just not sure about the goals against, because I think in it, it's whoever's got the least points against wins. So I could be top. You could be top. By the end of the day, there's a game on tonight. I could be top. Have you ever been top before? I've won it once. Oh, nice. Yeah. What do you get if you win? Do you do like a prize? Uh, like a So the winner, cash, of, cash the, winner of the league, we have a trophy. Nice. Which is a pop vinyl of Aaron Rodgers. Does that... Is it just the one trophy? And so, then does that get passed around? Yes, passed around. Right, so you don't get to keep the trophy. And whoever gets it for the year has to add to it. Okay. So it started off with just the pop vinyl, then someone put a bass on it, then someone put googly eyes on it, then someone got like a little fucking plaque for it. So every year you got to do something to it to make it look cooler. Yep. The loser gets a toilet trophy. It's nice. just a trophy of a toilet. Yep. Um, does that get I'll, passed around as well? Yep. Yep. And then I'm the only one to do this, but I said... If you go on eBay, you can normally, from some fucking Chinese website, buy a Super Bowl ring. It's like £7, a fantasy football Super Bowl right, ring. Right, yeah. So if you win the whole thing, the Super Bowl, buy, your, buy yourself one of them. And then you see how many rings we get when we stop doing it. I've done it. No one else has. So I've just got this fuck-off fantasy football <laughs> Super Bowl ring. And no one else has ever bought themselves one. Ah, well, who's losing there? But if I win this year, guess what I'll do? Buy another one. Buy another fucking Super Bowl ring. Cause just because they're not doing it don't mean I can't. Exactly. Losers. Yeah. You've got a Super Bowl ring. <laughs> Several. W- worth a well, lot of money. Exactly. All seven pounds. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we've got. I've got about 20 minutes left-ish. 
What do you want to talk about, mate? Um, what other sour cream and chive flavored things do you like? Ooh, uh, Pringles. They're the best flavored cring- Kringles. Kringles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are. Yeah. Um, followed closely by salt and vinegar. Do you think? Yeah. Interesting. I don't think I've ever, ever bought salt and vinegar Pringles. Ever. Or paprika. Paprika are banging. Paprika Max are some of the best crisps of all time. Mm. Um, but then straight after that, I go cheese and onion, you know. Re- uh, yeah, okay. Sour cream and crab. I don't really get Pringles, to be honest. Do you not? No. Mm. There's some I'll, I'll, I'll help myself to if I'm at like a oh, yeah. party or a buffet. But I don't buy them in the house. Interesting. Why is that, do you think? Oh, I don't buy any crisps, really. Boring. Why? I don't like, I like, I like plain boring food like no flavor fish and rice yeah and broccoli and broccoli Ooh. And the broccoli mm. tender stem i love tender stem me too on a sunday dinner i've started doing tender stem broccoli and i'll, I'll fucking boil it then yeah. put then put it in a tub cover it in cheese sauce so like cauliflower Ooh. cheese but tender stem broccoli and cheese yeah get that in the oven for 20 minutes crisps up the cheese like the top Ooh. of the cheese sauce <laughs> Yummy. That's naughty. It's naughty, but everything on my meals are naughty. That's why, I've, <laughs> that's why I've got the jelly belly, my friend. That's why I'm a chunky monkey. <sighs> got any news for me? <laughs> any news for you? <laughs> oh, what was it? Is that the end of the sour cream and <laughs> chive conversation? You asked me what my favourite thing other than these were. I told you. Oh yeah. Anything else? Um, nuts. Have you ever had sour cream and chive nuts? No. You know what? I'm a big not not a big nut fan. Well, generally. I nearly got us nuts. Really? I mean, I'm not against nuts. I'm I'm getting into them. I'm dabbling a little bit, but I've not had flavoured nuts like that. Interesting, because they had these little. It was literally just a handful. Again, Aldi fucking middle, like, aisle. middle aisle. Yeah, yeah. It's just a handful, but it's like flavoured peanuts. They're like supposed to be protein pots or whatever. Yeah. Okay. And they had like a barbecue flavour, and then a jalapeno flavor oh a gel i like jalapeno i know you do and i was like oh should i just get them but then when i picked them up they were tiny there's like 10 nuts in it uh, and there's like one pound fifty a bag what that's like f- could, that's like 15p a nut when i could get fucking sour cream pretzels and there's the a lot in that best. bag it's a ba- that's a full bag oh yeah that's that's probably going to go in the snack helmet next sunday if they'll wait, they won't last a long time. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah. You know, they'll probably go stale by then, to be fair. So you That's probably so can't, shit. You can't, can't wait that long. Can I don't I not, know. Do pretzels go stale? I don't know. Can I not put them in an airtight tub? I could just eat them. Get some more. I mean, he's going to Tesco, though. Airtight tub. Airtight tub. I think you'll be fine. Keep some crisp. Crisp. Any uh, sour cream flavored things you like? Right? <laughs> I like sour cream and chive dip. You know. Oh yeah, now we're talking. Because then any mm. anything, any crisp can become sour can become cream. sour cream and chive. <laughs> or Starburst, if you really want to go there. Yeah, you could dip your Starburst in there. Yeah, pizza. You could. Yeah, I mean, I think it'll go well with pizza. Child's hand. Yep. You don't want to eat no. Probably not. You're not really into cannibalism. I've not tried it. You know, know, when you're trying the sort of person I would have. Well, I'll try anything once. There you go, then. If you were offered human meat... (laughs) And we've done this. (laughs) Would you eat it? (laughs) I think we've done this. If it was covered in sour cream and chive sauce. Oh, 100%. I wouldn't think twice. (laughs) I wouldn't ask what the meat was. (laughs) I'd just put it in my mouth. Uh, Is this uh, this medium rare? Sorry, uh, you know. I don't really care. Just get that fucking sauce on it and get it in my fucking fat face. Now. Anything else? Or Any other it's sour quite, cream you're quite happy moving on? Or do you want to... Probably more sour cream and try have things, oh, flavoured prob- things. Probably, that we've yeah. not considered. Um, what about them like little wheels? Them little crisp wheels? Oh, yeah. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? I know what you mean, yeah. yeah. They're always sour cream and chive. They are sour cream and chive. That's what I was good. That's what I picked up before them. Ah, nice. But you kept with the pretzel theme. I kept with the pretzel theme. Ah, you know, I'm not opposed to it. It's quite nice. Well, you know, I know you enjoyed the pretzel. I want to make sure that my boy had something he enjoyed. Thank you. That's that's Because I got you back, you. bro. Yeah, you always do. I have chives growing in my garden, you know. <laughs> All you need now is some sour. <laughs> no, I need, yeah. And then I can cream that and stick some chives in it. You know what this podcast needs? Savage Garden. (laughs) (laughs) 
Oh. Savage Garden is one of those bands that everyone forgets about, I think, but I know, n- knows all their songs. I have never forgot about Savage well, Garden. Well, no, you haven't, because you're a massive fan. Do you know oh, a song Into the oh. Desert by Savage Garden? <laughs> Max does. Max sang at us. He did. He was shocked afterwards. For those of you that are new to the podcast, Max is our Scottish friend. He's been on a couple of episodes that you can go back and listen to. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think he was on about... I think he wants to host Christmas again. Yeah, he host Christmas last year. It was called Merry Chris Max. Yep. Well named by myself. (laughs) Um, And he wants to come and host Christmas again because if you're going to have a Christmas episode, why invite the one person on earth that fucking despises Christmas more than anything to come and do a quiz? Yeah, it's like having the Grinch do um, Christmas or Scrooge. Did I do? I did the Christmas quiz last you year. You did it, yeah. It was, it was really very, hard. It was fucking ridiculously hard and weighted against me. <laughs> Let's get the Scottish guy on and the last Scottish based food questions. Got to give the boy. You got to give the boy smell, pan you? Yeah, true. You know what I mean. Do you know what I should do? Maybe we should do this off the cuff. Go on. Top five sour cream and chive things. Oh, okay. We haven't done top five for a while. You... Play the jingle. Play the jingle. Oh. <laughs> Play it. Press the thing. No. Fire. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So, so what we're doing? Top five sour cream and chives. Stuff. Stuff. Okay. Yeah. Anything that's sour um, cream and chives stuff. Sour. I'm just hey, Googling. Good Googling it. Yeah, sour cream and Do you chai. not know your top five favourite sour cream well, and Well, we're going to go things. Pringles. Yeah, that's got to be up there. We've both agreed that they're absolutely just top tier Pringles. Um, the best flavour for Pringles. Then I'm going to go pretzels. Oh, these ones? Yeah, well, not these, just in general. These then ones I like. Penn State ones. I always buy the Penn ah. State ones. Then I'm going to go dip. Yep. The dip. <laughs> the dip. Any particular branded dip? Or? You know what? No. No, just any. I, I like the fresh stuff out the fridge, though. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. The ones with the little plastics top that you peel back. That's the one, yeah. The one in, like, you're normally getting a multi-pack. Yes. What are the other flavours you get? Normally, like... Tzatziki yeah. or something like that. Um, there's always like garlic. A, there's always a garlic there's always one. Garlic, and then like a normally a pinky one. Yeah, I don't know what the pinky one is. I always eat it, but I don't know what it is. And I always stay away from it, but I always used to be picky with food. Uh, then, obviously, it's clearly going to be the uh, cheese and chive uh, cheese spread in a tube. <laughs> 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 Which is really weird, right? So, have you, this cheese spread in a tube, right? Have you seen that before? No. So I walked into a moment. I've not seen cheese spread in a tube in years. And I walked into my into one of the offices at work today. It's a woman just had it on a desk. And I'll come in and I saw it. So I immediately changed my face, looking really concerned. And it was like, oh, and full off. He said, Sammy, you all right? I was like, yeah, I, I just really need some cheese spread in a tube. <laughs> <laughs> and so we just like, I've got some if you need to be dead in <laughs> <laughs> Oh, bless him. Yeah, we've got some so here. Sick. We actually really need some. And then... <laughs> That's so stupid. And then, obviously, it's going to be the wheels that I also mentioned earlier because I don't know any of them. Well, are they there? What are they called? Oh, it's just called Party Mix. Them. The party mix, yeah, party I've mix. had them before. They're yeah. they're nice, them. There's my. I top. feel like that's the dip I always get. This this one, the there, sour cream and chive from Sainsbury's. That one in the little glass jar. Ah, oh, so you're not going refrigerated. I'm going to go for both two dips. I'm double dipping. What? As in, like one and two, or in the same space? What do you mean? As in, that's two of your top five. Is the yep. cold dip two in diff. the jar dip? Yep. Yep. Cool. There's not that many sour cream and chive <laughs> things, is there? Now you've said it. <laughs> Go on, then what's number three, mate? The number one, yeah, no, yeah, the dips are going to take the top two spots. Okay. Number three, the Pringles. Obviously. Number four. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to look on the old Google. Um, the wheels. Oh, you're going wheels, not party mix wheels. I think the wheels. Because the wheels the are just, just part of the party mix. Yeah, anyway. and, but they're the best part of the party mix. But and you, there's lots you know of, part of parts You're, of the party mix you that are I'm right. not that fussed about. So I'm going to go for the wheels. And then uh, we'll go five. for some... <sighs> I 
What are your thoughts of just sour cream, but me adding my fresh chives to it? So you can have three dips? No, but I'm just saying, does, would that count? I mean, if you want it to. Do you want it to? But you will have three sour cream and chive dips. Yeah, and then two lots of crisps to dip in them. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm going for. I'm going for this old El Paso called sour cream. Yeah, in a little little ramekin. Ramekin, thank you. With some chives from my herb garden, cut up and just uh, mixed in. There you go. Well, that might take the number one spot. Have you done it yet? Have you ever done that before? Maybe. Have you or have you not ever done that before? I've mixed my chives into quite a few things. I don't remember off the top of my head a specific occasion I did that with sour cream. So what you're saying is it's in your top five, but it might it's not the have idea ever of existed. It, right? It's the idea of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, that is our top five favourite things that are sour cream and chive. It's that coming when you came into this episode. Let's celebrate celebrate by eating some of these um, sour cream and chard pretzels. Sour cream and pretzels. <laughs> mm. Mm. Could do with some dip. We are really, really running out of content, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, we've only got ten minutes left now. We're going to talk about the last next ten minutes. Um, oh, I tell you what, I started watching something on Netflix yesterday, and let me just get the name of it all because I've already forgot. It's an anime on Netflix. Is it called The Blue Samurai? It is not, no. So I saw it advertised last year, maybe beginning of this year, and I thought, fuck, that looks terrifying. It's called, like, Junji Ito um, Maniac, Japanese Tales of the Macabre. Mm. And they're just little stories. I'm trying to see how many episodes are. Maybe, like, eight episodes. But they're all just, like, little stories, like, horror anime stories. Fucking brilliant, mate. Really? That's so, cool. so good. Like, one of the episodes is this, um, like, this young girl is found to be hanging outside of a, of a home, you know, like, quite high up. Um, and then people are saying how they're seeing her ghost, which, but her ghost is just a massive version of a head, and they're seeing it round about... Then it just goes absolutely fucking mental, and everyone on Earth has a giant head with a noose on it. Like it's basically just going around and hanging themselves. It's fucking like weird as fuck. That sounds mental. I tell you what, it reminds me of. It reminds me of anime love, Re- love, death, and robots. That's why I like ah, it. Nice. Really out there storylines. Yeah, you're like what the hell's going on? But creepy, and anime do creepy very well anyway, don't they? You yeah, know, like, they do. They can make a smile terrifying. Absolutely, can't they? Um, I think that's what's good about like things like anime or Love, Death and Robots because it's not live action. Probably doesn't cost as much, especially for something like anime. It could be wrong, but I feel like you can get awesome, cool little stories out like that, for, and you're not breaking the bank like yeah, oh, from yeah, the production companies. Um, not highly recommended on Net- on IMDb or anything. It's only like six out of ten, but I've really enjoyed it for something nice. just to bang on. Let, you know, st- obviously love my horror. Um, I can't be asked with a horror film don't really know what to watch just want something on brilliant how long are they episodes i don't know like each story is like 10 minutes some of them are uh, a bit longer right, okay, some episodes sorry. might have two three stories in them so very love death and robots then yes sort of anything between like eight to 20 minutes yeah or yeah yeah that's cool i'll have to check that out what's it called again uh, it's like junji ito maniac but it's the ta- the ta- the japanese tale of macabre or right something okay like that. okay Tales of Japanese Macaulay. It's really, yeah, just really enjoying it. Just yeah. put it on the other day. Quite bad, really. <laughs> Add little in. But she <sighs> she was gaming. I wanted to watch something on the telly. Yeah. Didn't want to put anything too crazy on. So I was like, I'll just bang this on um, and just turn it off when she comes on. I'm going to put it into gaming. my IMDb now before I forget. Yeah. Um, you know, because Netflix are smashing the uh, anime at the moment. They've got, God, loads, they've got loads, loads yeah. of um, really cool content. So I, I said that. Um, there it is. Just so you can type it in. Junji Ito Maniac. That's it. Japanese Tales of the Macabre. Yes, got it. <clears throat> cool. Um, yeah, I've said Blue Samurai because our good friend Rich T has been watching Blue Samurai. Um, I don't know if you've seen that advertised on it uh, on Netflix. Maybe. There's loads on there. That it it was on like the new release. So I watched the trailer off the back of Rich watching it. He said it was good. Um, it looks amazing. Like the, yeah. anim- like the anime style looks stunning. It looks really, really incredible. The brand new series, I think. So I think it's the first series that come out this year. Um, so... I might start watching that. 
I've not really got any TV shows on the go at the moment. No, um, to be fair, I went through, <clears throat> over the last few months, I got into TV shows a lot. I was watching a lot of crime TV shows, yeah, yeah. a lot of crime TV shows. Um, and then I kind of come off that a little bit. I've not finished Loki yet. I finished that on Friday because it was a season v. finale, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, it was. So I've still got to finish that. I've got Gen V to finish. Yep. Um, but I do them in a night. Yeah. But I'm thinking, I'm thinking anime is my way forward at the minute. And there's a lot of, like generally they have a lot of episodes, don't they? So you've got a lot of content to keep you going. But Definitely. then sometimes that's off-putting, you know, when it's just like, oh, 158 episodes to go or whatever. Um, because my dad has just started watching or recently started watching Castlevania. Oh, the really? The original one, yeah, yeah which yeah, I've yeah. still never watched. Uh, I think I started it, but never... It was like before I was sort of into anime. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think there's loads on Netflix now. You can just go put anything on. Loads, yeah. Um, I had Crunchyroll for a little while. Yeah, I was going to ask if you still got Crunchyroll. No, I haven't. Um, I will get back into it. But like I said, there's that much on Netflix. That's why I was like, I might just... Because I started watching Demon Slayer. Yeah. Um, which again, I need to really go back because I was putting it on when I wasn't really paying attention and I do want to pay attention to it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I was just like, well, if I'm watching Demon's Lane, I'm watching a lot of the stuff that's already on Netflix while I'm paying for Crunchyroll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I've that. come off that. But seeing as we're talking anime, we're going to see Spirit Away live, mate. Oh, I got, so excited. I got us tickets to the London Col- Coliseum next April. That April the second or some shit. We are going to see Spirited Away live. Oh. First time they've uh, left First Japan. Time. Yeah, with it. This is incredible because they've done My Neighbor Totoro, haven't they? That's they been have, over yeah. the last couple of years, and that looks amazing as well. But I love all all that Stuart Ghibli stuff. Um, and Spirited Away is such a fantastic, fantastic film. So, I, and I'd, I'd love to see how they do it in theater because it's supposed to be incredible, isn't it? Like critically acclaimed. Yes. So that sounds amazing so when i bought the tickets we're quite far back that's fine but i was like i didn't, I didn't want to break the bank with it but i was like this still looks quite close yeah because it's only like 25 quid a ticket because <clears throat> i i got on the pre-release right, right yeah yeah speaking to my boy aaron who i used to do the old podcast with and i mentioned it, he went i'm going to that i'm taking the wife i was like oh no way and he was like yeah i was like i want that expensive was it and he rolled his eyes i went what he goes oh i got like front front Right. It's like 170 quid a ticket or something. So now I'm thinking then 25 quid tickets are probably fucking nosebleeds. But yeah, but, but <clears throat> it's an experience, it's an experience, isn't it? mate. So we'll, yeah. go out, we'll go out in London afterwards. Yeah. We'll buy two, we'll have to re and get two drinks. Yeah. And we're going to go, I'm so excited. Oh uh, yeah, me too. It's going to be banging. Yeah, so I'm going to, um, big style into anime, I think. That's going to be my thing. Well, I'm not tarot reading. Well, you're not tarot reading. I'm going to be animeing. Yeah, because I thought you were going to get into it quite big when you got Crunchyroll before. I did, and it just kind of... I th- mind you, when I had it before, I think that was kind of the start of the dipping mood and stuff. And yeah. It just kind of... It went from there, and, you know, I started smashing Chainsaw Man, was really enjoying it. But, yeah, just, I don't know, dipping mood. I, was I feel watching... like you need to be in the right frame of mind for a lot of the anime as well. Oh, massively. Like, things like Chainsaw Man, it's good fun, but it's quite intense. It's quite a lot going on. It's just a bit like, you know, if you just want something just to mindless to mong out to, I don't know if it's the best sort of thing. And it's so easy to just put on Rick and Morty. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. And you Sorry. know, it's, it's just comfort, isn't it? A lot of those things that you already know, like uh, for me, a big one would be like, growing up, it was always like Friends. We had all mm. yeah, the yeah, Friends yeah. on DVD, bef- way before streaming was ever a thing. And you just stick it on it. For me, it'd be something to, like, I'd fall asleep to, because I always used to fall asleep watching something. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, as far as I still do, I still watch... Family Guy or American Dad every yeah. night. Every night. Yeah, see, I, I always used to do that, but um, Claire doesn't like, can't, like, can't sleep if someone's on. Oh, really? Yeah, so I've had to grow out of that, unfortunately. God damn it. I know. But on the odd time, like, you know, if I do get to watch something, like, to fall asleep to, like, if Claire's away or whatever, I then I'd actually struggle now because I've like trained my brain yeah, out yeah, of it yeah, and yeah. like, oh, this is really bright and annoying. <laughs> I want it to be on, but equally it's like annoying, so I would just turn it off and then go to sleep. But yeah. I, yeah what would you fall asleep to now? Is it still the same thing or a lot of time would be Studio Ghibli stuff. Oh really? House Moving Castle, uh, uh, My Name of Totoro, um, Spirit Away. They're normally my three go to ones. Mm. Um, because it's nice and relaxing as well, and like yeah, the music's yeah, yeah. lovely and it's just quite soothing. Um. Yeah, it'd be those something like that. Normally, I just normally stick a film on or Tron Legacy because the soundtrack. 
Fucking love it. Still what? never seen Tron Legacy. I love it. It's got a soft spot for me. I know, I think it's, it wasn't that well received when it came out, but I think no. it's got like a little bit of a cult following. Um, mm-hmm. But the music, the whole album's done by Daft Punk. Like they do the score. Oh, amazing. And it's just amazing. Like honestly, one of my favourite Have you got score. it on vinyl? No. I know. Someone I, I know has it. I tried to get, I've tried to get it on vinyl, but it's like so hard to get it. Or it really? was. Last time I checked, it was like 200 quid or something. Fucking hell. But they might have done re-releases and stuff since, but I, it's one of those things that I'd love, I'd love, love, love to have. Mm. Um, but I know it was very, very difficult to get hold mm-hmm. of. But it's the sort of thing like, like driving back from, from yours in the dark, that's the sort of soundtrack you want. Really? It's almost like Blade Runner-esque, you know, mm. like um, that very much like neon, um, neon, like ne- neo-noir type thing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, of course. So yeah, mm. that's comforting to fall asleep to. Interesting. I might give that a go then. Or if not, I'll definitely listen to the soundtrack. Yeah. Oh yeah. Either way. Yeah. Sound. Well, we're at an hour. So we'll save what we're going to do this week for next week, shall we? Yeah. And by next week, we mean 10 minutes when we record the next episode. Yeah, but they don't need to know that. Uh, haven't we already said that? It'll be a fresh new week and we'll all be like, oh, so excited. We did so much together, but we're not going to tell you. Oh yeah. We'll still so do that cool. anyway, because we're good actors now. Good actors. That's yeah. it. So any final passing thoughts to our beautiful, gorgeous listeners? Um if you think of any more sour cream and chive based foods because we've probably yeah. we've probably just skimmed the surface probably yeah please let us know because i feel like there's a big gap in our knowledge there yeah we should have got josh in for culinary corner fuck we will he'll be coming in the next few weeks yeah um and at the same time, like, if you're going to be telling us about these sour cream and chive things, you may as well buy it for yeah, us. Yeah, because we need to try them. We need to try them on Snack of the Week. And obviously you'll get a shout out, which is like the biggest thing ever. Oh, God, yeah. You're getting a shout out <laughs> into the podcast. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, please like, share, subscribe, all that fucking things that other influencers say. Is that what we are? Are we influencers now? Are we think? influencers? Do we get that title? I feel that... Can I put that on my like signature at work? Well, I, I was thinking about this the other day, you know, influencers. So someone calls themselves an influencer for what? Because they're famous on the internet. Yeah? Yeah. We're not famous by any sense of the word. We only really talk to maybe some of our friends on this podcast. How many people have come to you and gone, I have watched this film because you've told me to on the podcast? Yeah, quite a lot, actually. We influence... So our boy Matt Heaton messaged me and said, honestly, listen to this podcast, I... Didn't, he said, I knew I missed it. I didn't realise just how much I missed listening to you boys. I immediately watched Talk To Me after listen, hearing you talk about yeah. it. Yeah, We are influencers. We're influencing people to go and try these films. And try sour cream. And and try sour s- cream and chad stuff. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you so, go. you know, other than that, tell other people to listen to us so then we can influence them into oh. buying us things also. Yeah. That's what we need. Peace.